Hey guys, Dan at Warpaint JKU. As you can see, we have a different rig in the garage with us this morning. And we have Mario over here behind me in the background. Um, and we are going to finally switch that Dana 30 out for the ultimate Dana 44. So check it out. All right, first step is going to be to get that vehicle safely up on jack stands and remove both your front tires. Again, I'm not going to teach you how to do that because if you don't know how to take wheels and tires off of a rig, this axle swap's probably not for you. All right, so to remove your brake caliper while doing your ball joint swap, you're just going to have to remove these two uh, bolts that connect your brake caliper to your knuckle. There's one on the top, there's one on the bottom. In this case, on a 2015, they happen to be a 21 millimeter. Your year might be slightly different. Um, but basically the same process, right, on any solid front axle vehicle, whether you have a Dana 30, Dana 44, does not matter. You gotta take your caliper off. Once the caliper is off, your rotor is just gonna slide off. Your caliper holds it on. It's time to loosen up the bolts so that you can actually get the unit bearing off the axle. Now, the way you're gonna do that, so there's a 36 millimeter socket out here on the end of the short side of the axle shaft on the outer. And then there's also a 13 millimeter bolt on the back side, and there's three of them. There's one, basically it's kind of like a triangle. So you have one at the top and then two at the bottom. You're gonna need a 12 point socket to get on those. It's not your standard uh, six sided socket, but you're gonna get your 12 point on there. You're gonna break them loose, and then we'll come back and we'll loosen up that 36 millimeter. Okay, as you can see here, this 36 millimeter is going to want to cause the axle shaft to rotate. So the only way that you can tighten it when you put it back together or loosen it to take it apart is to use a long pry bar or crowbar. You can insert it into the studs on your unit or hub bearing and prevent it from rotating whichever way you would like. Now, I set it up this way just to show you on camera, but we're going to have to flip it around, face it in the other direction. That way we can loosen it and spin that 36 millimeter off. And once that 36 millimeter is off, that's an opportunity to pry away the hub bearing a little bit and give yourself enough room to work your wheel speed sensor out. The screw that holds that in is going to be a five millimeter machine screw. You're going to be able to, to back that out and then very, very carefully remove your wheel speed sensor as not to damage it. They are pretty sensitive. The next step after you've removed your unit bearing and removed your axle shaft, which will slide straight out the hole through the middle of the steering knuckle, it's gonna to be to remove the cotter pins and castle nuts on your upper and lower ball joint. On a Dana 30 and a Dana 44, they are not torqued all that tight, but be careful, that knuckle will fall if there's no nuts holding it on. So once you remove the lower, make sure that you leave the upper castle nut loose, but on just a couple of threads. So when you strike it with like a, like a four or five pound mini sledgehammer to knock it loose, it doesn't wind up falling down and crushing your feet. Of course, everything you've done to this side, you're just going to do the exact same thing in the exact same order to the other side of the axle and your axle will be stripped and ready to remove shocks and springs. Now, depending upon the brake lines you have, you may have your brake line actually snaked through and held into position by a 10 millimeter bolt under the spring perch. I am going to show you in another video how to extend your factory brake line and reroute it in a way to give you an extremely long brake line without actually having to swap it. But if yours is there, you're gonna wanna remove it and move it behind your shock using that 10 millimeter bolt. Now, once the frame of the vehicle is supported on a tall jack stand, maybe like a six ton, you're gonna wind up jacking up the axle just slightly, removing the jack stand from underneath the axle and slightly lowering down the axle. But in order to do that enough to reduce the amount of weight on that spring to where you can take it out, you're also gonna have to disconnect your shock. So there you have it, right? A little quick video about how to uninstall the front axle. Now, I'm not gonna go over necessarily the size sockets you need and the size nuts that were there because 
The problem is with a lot of these Jeeps is a lot of those bolts and nuts have been changed out over time, right? You have aftermarket control arms that came with their own hardware. A lot of that stuff's kind of different, right? So not gonna go into the detail on all that. You can figure that out on your own. But taking out your axle, a couple of key things to remember is that it's gonna be heavy, right? Even, even a Dana 44 or a Dana 30 without you know being a built axle is gonna be heavy, heavy enough to break your foot. So you definitely wanna make sure it's supported and all that kind of stuff. Now, when you pull out your axle shafts, it gets a lot lighter, but again, still heavy. Very easy for you to move, probably even by yourself, definitely with two people, but it's under the Jeep. There's a lot of things hanging around down there and, and your feet are there, right? So you're gonna to wanna to just be careful with that. But once, once that axle is uninstalled, as you can see here, you have some room, but you have some things still hanging down there right below the rig. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're careful of the shocks because they are still bolted up here. They have a little bit of wiggle room in them, but you don't wanna to put too much pressure on them. You can damage them. So when you get it under there, right, when you get your new axle back under there, which you'll see in a second, you're gonna to wanna to put it on the jack stands and then you're gonna to wanna to start carefully hooking things up. Not that big of a deal. Basic hand tools, very simple. Let's get back to it. All right, guys. So obviously, Ultimate Dana 44 slid under the Jeep, right? Um, I do that using uh, casters that I built with two by fours and jack stands. Makes it really easy to just kind of slide it around, get it under the Jeep. Once it was under the Jeep, behind the track bar, right? Because your track bar connects to the front of the axle. Um, the first thing I did was put a bolt through on each of the upper control arms. That way when we rotate the bottom of the axle to line up the lower control arms, uh, you don't have to worry about the axle really going anywhere, right? You have a little bit more support. It's almost like you got a couple extra hands holding it for you. So what we're gonna do, is we're basically just gonna take your lower control arm and you're gonna kind of move it into position and get it between the brackets and get a good idea of how far the axle needs to kind of roll backwards. Sometimes you can use a jack stand. It just kind of depends on exactly where you get the axle and how centered under the Jeep it is. But let's get to it. Let's uh, get that lower control arm in there. All right, so we're gonna drop this axle down as far as we can get it to drop. The suspension's completely drooped out. The shock is not connected, right? That's how we're gonna start an attempt to get these super long springs in here. Um, now, some of you guys that haven't watched, right? Maybe you go, should go watch my long arm versus short arm video because the spring perch is here and when it comes down, if you come straight down from the upper spring mount on the frame, it actually comes down completely in front of the axle, even in front of where the sway bar connects. The reason it does that is because of the short arms. There's an arc in your axle travel as it comes up and down. And I know you can't see it from this camera angle all that well, but this is probably a good four inches behind where the spring is gonna live, okay? But we want that because it gives us the extra length to wind up getting the spring in there. So with the help of Texas Jeeper, we're gonna put the upper, the upper portion of the spring right up where it belongs, where it's gonna live. And then we're gonna slide the lower spring over where uh, the, the, the factory bump stop is and then slowly jack up the axle to bring it forward so it's lined up a little bit better for, for, the, uh, for the spring to be completely happy. So, uppers carefully in so we don't scratch this. Okay, Texas Jeeper, if you wanna start jacking nice and slow. Okay, hang on. All right, why don't you do it again? Let's see. Okay, bring us back in. Bump stops are back in. We're just, we got it jacked up. Basically the full droop, right? This is where the shock's not hooked up yet, but if it was, this is the height that it would be at right now with this current shock setup. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the factory hardware from his, uh, from his aftermarket track bar from Rock Crawler. Right, Rock Crawler track bar? Yeah, we're gonna use that and we're gonna send it back in. And of course, the axle, and this is always gonna happen. Uh, if it doesn't happen, buy a lottery ticket, because this is always gonna happen, where your axle, when you start doing something like this, is not gonna be centered where it exactly was before. And as I lift up this track bar bracket, um, it's not, I can't get the bolt hole through it. So what we're gonna do is some fun things with some ratchet straps. We're gonna pull the axle whichever way we need to do it. At this point, you're gonna attach one end of your ratchet strap to the frame. The other end is going to be attached to the axle. You would prefer it to be as parallel to the axle as possible. It's just gonna make it easier to pull it. But 
If it isn't that parallel, it's not a big deal because remember your upper and lowers are already connected. That's going to stop the axle from moving forward and back. It's just going to move sideways, allowing that bolt hole to line up. At this point, both springs are in, both shocks are in, all four control arms are connected, track bar is connected. It's time to start putting the knuckle back on the same way you took it off. Make sure you torque everything to the manufacturer's specifications. Slide in new cotter pins. You can find those at your local auto parts store. Once that's done on both sides, it's on to doing axle shafts. Obviously with the axle shafts, even if you're reinstalling used axle shafts, it's a good idea to clean them off. It's also a really good idea to put a little gear oil on the splines to help them slide through the axle seal. You might have to turn it and wiggle it kind of, you know, uh, clockwise and counterclockwise to get those splines lined up with the carrier and push it on in. Of course, once that's done, the only thing left to do is to put back in the hub bearing, put back on the wheel speed sensor, brake rotor, brake caliper, wheels and tires, torque everything, give it a quick alignment, and you're off. All right, guys, so Ultimate Dana 44 under the rig. Just gonna swap the rear springs out real quick. He had the same issue with the rears that he did with the front. But you wanna save a bunch of money, you wanna do it yourself. This is definitely an easy thing that you can do in a day, especially if you have a buddy come over and help you. Uh, Ultimate Dana 44, buy it, have it drop shipped to your house. You can install it yourself with basic hand tools. Um, again, I made the alignment videos, so you guys can go back and check those out. Uh, it should tell you how to set up your toe and your caster nice and nice and uh, adjust your drag link even if you need to, which you may not, right? But that's it, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, and share it with your buddies.